Just for Snake. I'd like to make a telephone call, please. I'm afraid you'll have to wait. You don't seem very busy. I'm not. Look at the clock. What am I supposed to gather from that? You don't know it? No, I don't. We're about to move into radio silence time. That's the blue section there on the clock, you see? Yes. Blue area covers the three minutes after the hour and the three minutes after the half hour. It's worldwide radio silence time in shipping. That's telephonic communications, 2182 kilohertz. The red area you see there, that's telegraphic silence. Again, three minutes, but this time after the quarter past and the quarter two. This to allow space for distress calls. Faint ones that might be missed if someone were chatting on the radio phone. Explain to your satisfaction? I took your point some while ago. I'd have thought you'd have known all about shipping. Would you? Of course. Well, thank you for your explanation. You won't have to wait long now. It's all right, I don't think I need to make that call now. You obviously have some form of jungle telegraph on this ship, so why bother with radio? If the company intended to chop the line, Tesson would hardly put his daughter in a key position in this ship. Well, that's precisely what they expect us to believe. But she could hardly need a job. No, she's here to run the passenger side down. And who could do that with more style than the chief purser? Well, we can't do anything about that. Can't we? There's no way we can object to Tesson giving his daughter a job. Well, the only grounds we've got to go on is that they've retired Wally without due notice. You can't use that, John. It's against union regulations. I've been given notice of already. I... I asked to be retired. Wally, you expect us to believe that? There's this place uh, in Devon. I'm going back to the land. Back to the land, Wally? You've never been there. You've been at sea since you were 15. It's time for a change. Got a family in Devon, have you? No, I haven't, sir. That's right. The only family you've got's right here in this ship. And now you suddenly want to launch off into runner beans? If you don't mind, I have things to do. Strike you as just a touch odd. More than a touch. How did you know it was runner beans? <laughs> Sorry. You know, they may just have paid him off. Yes, I suppose he might just want to live in Devon. Well, there's one way to find out, of course. Her. She's hardly likely to tell us what's going on. No, not us. Him. Touch of pillow talk. Pillow over her face, if you like. Oh, is there something we don't know about? A noticeable change in attitude since a blood first rush. Yeah, well, I didn't know who she was then, did I? Oh, you're trying to tell me her daddy's millions have put you off. <laughs> there's not a true socialist alive who wouldn't make the boss's daughter. Not this one, matey. You wear a dirty raincoat when you go as your child. Eh? Hey? <laughs> Good idea. But not the issue. With Matt and the lady, a spot of nookie. It's the only chance we've got, so we use it. Issue solved. Forget it. Where were you last night? Before we learned the lady was for Bernie. Why don't you come and visit my engine room? I've got a greasy floor I'd like you to meet face to face. Excuse me again. Could you tell me where I could find the captain, please? Would you like me to announce your visit, Miss Laker? No, I'd simply like to know where he is. Excuse me, sir. Miss Laker would like a word with you. Yes, Miss Laker. You've obviously heard. In a roundabout way, yes. Then perhaps I should explain. Might help. In private? This way, Miss Laker. Thank you. Come in, Miss Laker. I'm sure you have a great deal to tell me about my ship. Some, but I'd like to ask a couple of questions. Snap. Ladies first, of course. Stephen, try that Swedish number again, would you please? Thank you. Parker. No, no, I'm far too busy to talk to Mr. Parker at the moment. I'd much rather talk about him. Thank you. How did you find out? It's our business to check out suspicious passengers. There can be a risk, especially when they're traveling under an assumed name. My name is of little importance. Then why not use it? I've just told you. And I shall tell the crew. I'm sure they'll be very relieved. Hello? Hello? Who is that? Hello? Emily? Hello, darling. It's Daddy. How are you? Good. Who was that who answered the phone? 
I see. No, 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 nothing's the matter. I was just a bit worried when I didn't get a reply last night. Oh, I see. Fine. Uh, now, listen, darling, I've got a surprise for you. That's right. Next trip. Well, but I, I'd rather you didn't go and stay with Granny. Mummy, well, but that doesn't matter, does it? Well, I, I love you, little one. Take care. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry about that. Oh, we were talking about your name. You were talking about my name. Yes, well, as you can imagine, it came as something of a surprise when we discovered that the new chief purser just happens to be the daughter of Mr. Turson, who just happens to be the owner of this happy little fishing fleet. We don't choose our parents. And I got this job on my own merit. The merit belongs to your father. My father knows nothing about it. And Arthur Parker doesn't know I'm my father's daughter. Satisfied? Confused. I applied for this job for my own reasons. I wanted, I, I needed to get away. Isn't that why most people work at sea? You are hardly most people, Miss Lake. I have had several years' experience uh, in hotel uh, uh, management. Are you saying that Arthur Parker doesn't know who you are? Yes. And your father doesn't know that you're to be the new chief person? No. Secretive family. On the phone just now. That was your daughter you were talking to? Emily, yes. Perhaps if I explain that my father has never spoken to me in that way, on or off the phone, you might understand. The reason he doesn't know I've got this job is because he doesn't know much about me at all. Or want to. Fortunately, the feeling is mutual. He's in Amsterdam. Well, that couldn't be better. Leave a message at Mr. Turson's hotel. No, 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 wait, wait. I'll come back with a cable for him. All right? This is my lucky day. I made certain Arthur Parker didn't know who I was. He's a very ambitious man. No playing favourites to please your father, then? He'll think he has. I don't follow. Well, now that you've told him who I am, he'll imagine my father will be tickled pink when he announces he's employed me. But your father doesn't know. Exactly. <laughs> you've heard that there's a battle going on about this line at boardroom level? Rumours, yes. And I presume that's what concerns the crew at the moment, the possibility of it being chopped. Are they right? It's not clear cut yet. There is a certain faction on the board who feels it would be more profitable carrying freight. And Arthur Parker supports them. Oh, no. He won't decide until he knows who's winning. And your father? I don't know. I imagine he'd accept the board's decision. If the ship can be proved to be running at a loss, it would be in his best interest to go for freight. It is running at a loss. It needn't be. Passengers can make for good balance sheets, providing you give them what they want. And you intend to? Yes. Even though it might be against your father's wishes? It doesn't come into it. We never see one another, and I owe him nothing. And that's about as much as he cares for people, friends, crew, anyone. He makes a lot of money by keeping his finger on the pulse of all his companies. The profit margin's all he cares about. But you don't. Oh, I understand balance sheets, Captain. I inherited that much. Then why? Why what? Why pick a fight with your father? Now, I'd hate to think that my daughter would be trying to sort me out when she's your age. I love her. Perhaps that's it. What happened? OK, but it's not going to be easy to convince the others to accept you on merit. Let's wait and see. You could be in for a rough ride. Yes. It doesn't bother you? Should it? <laughs> There's no way I'm going to work under her. You didn't know she was going to be the new person then? No. I didn't know you were retiring early either. It's of no consequence now. It is? Why didn't you say something? Because I want to make a clean break. To grow vegetables? In four years, you'd have retired on full pension, gold watch and all. I don't want to go on about it now. I just thought you should know who your new boss was to be. Hmm. Not for long, I wouldn't think. There's no way you'll get rid of her. I'm sorry. I know you hoped to get the job yourself when I retired. Oh, well. Just one of life's small hurdles. Looked at in another way. It could be a boon played, right? Is on board now, stop. We'll take post as chief person next week, stop. Eminently suitable for position, stop. Acquired post on her own merit, stop. Obviously runs in the family, stop. I remain, etc., etc. Get that off to Mr. Turson immediately, Sophie. Hmm. 
Maybe just to prove that I can. To your father? To myself. Thank you for being so civilized, Captain Anderson. Yes, well, if you like, I could show you around now officially. Thank you. I would like. The one thing puzzles me. What's that? Why you came on board as a passenger. Seemed logical. The purser looks after the passenger, so look at the job from the passenger's point of view. At least, that's what I intended. And what about our point of view on the crew deck yesterday? And not that I'm complaining, mind you, just asking. I'm sure I'm not the first or last female to appear scantily clad on this ship. No. I wanted to see how the crew would react. After all, I shall be responsible for passengers' complaints. And did she, uh, the passenger in question? Well, let's just say they underestimated the devious nature of the female. My job's to protect them from the passengers, too. Problem, love. I think it is. I don't like having money in my... It's just money like any other. For us. You've got a wife. And not having one costs money. It's what you want, isn't it? Not if it's stolen. Don't be silly. You want to chirp away on this floating motel for the rest of your life? You're too good, Joe. You want a future with me, don't you? Hey? Well, don't you? Was the new lady purser want to inspect my cabin too? Come on. Go ahead, love. You'll find the pot in the lavatory system, the heroine's under the mattress. You know, with him, it might just be true. Perhaps you better check. Not funny. That's what I thought. By the way, you're wasting fuel. Either you pull the stabilizers in and we make Amsterdam on time, or you keep the passengers from throwing up when we arrive behind schedule. And I'd rather you didn't impress Miss Laker at vast fuel costs, which go down on my budget. Thank you very much. If there's nothing else, There's no love lost, Captain. Well, with only three feet of corridor between you, I'd be happier if it was the other way around. I'd rather not oblige, if you don't mind. Someone at home? No, not anymore. You're one of the few lucky ones. Well, we'll be arriving in Amsterdam shortly. Not a bad view. <laughs> I'm surprised you've stuck the job this long. How could I let you down? Still didn't work out for you, though, did it? No. You never knew what you were doing, did you? Or did you? I don't know what you're talking about. I used to listen through the keyhole. I'm surprised you didn't look through it. It was bad enough to listen. I imagine the rest. Your girlfriend's looking for you. She always is. Keeps us slim. Peter, don't fool around with people's feelings. You did. Maybe it's your fault. Fine, if that makes you feel any easier. You'd never kiss it better, would you? Sorry. Catherine. I was very sorry to hear about Emma. I mean it. I'd stay clear of her if I were you. Aren't you glad you're not me, then? Because I can't stay clear of her. Yet. I think we should give her a second chance. Any time. I missed out the first. Oh, that's fine, John. You go ahead. Not me. I'm standing right back. Well, it'll make a change. It's not Wally's fault, but she is better looking.
could use it. Trust her. Give her a chance. Her father doesn't even know she's on the ship. You said it, John. Yeah. And who the hell was that down there in the bloody great motor? I wanted to believe you, John. But Matt's right. I'd like to think it was a mini with ideas, but it isn't. It's all gold. And there you are. I'm surprised you found the time to drop by and say hello, Father. Would you please get into the car? I'd rather not. The air's fresh out here. I have lunch organised. You better go. You'll be late. For two. Unless you enjoy attracting the attention of every dockyard worker in sight. Yes, you would think of that. I'm too wise to argue, so, uh, yes, thank you. I'd enjoy lunch. And once inside the safety of the limousine, he divulged the second phase of his dastardly plan to his beautiful daughter. You need any more, John? We're pawns in life's game, man. Just lie back and enjoy it. No, thanks. You amaze me. Two can play the same game, Charlie boy, and I've just learned the rules. Yeah? Tell me, tell me. There aren't any. Oblige me by resigning the post immediately. You talk like a telex, Father. Do you know that? We'll leave the ship today. Fly back to London. I'll take care of it. I paid my fare. I'm a passenger. I'll reimburse your fare. I don't want it reimbursed. I also don't want to resign. Sorry about that. You can't all have everything you want in life, Catherine. Only you. It's cramped in here, isn't it? You're a pet. A fool, you mean. Are you? Not going out for a bit of Dutch? I haven't been asked out. And I don't intend prowling the streets of Amsterdam for a bit of anything. Well, you could dredge the canals. I have to do the washing. Ah, oh, it's the wife and mother in you coming out. Pity I can't find a husband and father to match. Never mind, I'll stick to collars and cuffs. Would you like your clothes ironed as well, sir? No extra charge. I saw you're on the right road to our fortune. <laughs> she stood you up, did she, Miss Laker? For another man? Yes, you could say that. I did. Why then? I'll go and practice my Dutch. She really does mean something to you, doesn't she? Yes, unfortunately. That ship you had in a bottle. It must have been about five. Do you remember it? I loved that ship. I wanted it so much. But you said it wouldn't come out of the bottle. No, I don't. I do. It did come out. Well, you're being obtuse. Am I? Yeah. You noticed. Huh? I have damn good reasons for not wanting you on that ship without having to put up with this nonsense. But it isn't nonsense. Anything but. Do you want the reasons why I object to your taking this person? I guess most of them. Our company matters about which you know nothing. You're sure about that, are you? What's the name of that bright young man on the board? One so full of ideas. It's amazing what advantages there are in being a woman. One gets oneself into all sorts of forbidden places. When one puts one's mind to it, of course. And one being a woman, that is. This one. The one you never forgave for not being a son. <laughs> this is a lovely lunch. Gone ashore, Matt. What about you? Trying to catch up. Correspondence, you know. Uh -huh. How is she? Hmm? The wife. Oh, she's fine, thanks, Matt. Very well. Can I buy you a beer? 
I really ought to finish this. John, look, it uh, wasn't my place to go on at you about Turson's daughter. I'd like to apologize. No need for that, Matt. Looks like you were right, anyway. Yeah, I think I'll take you up on that beer. Do us good to get away from it. courtesy to ask me before you apply I asked them. you for something once in my life, never again. I'll take it, but I'll never ask again. You never needed to ask. I was always there to give you whatever you wanted. Where were you when the only chance my child had was an operation that I couldn't afford, but you could? Tell me, Father, where were you when I tried to break through the red tape of your company to find you? When I tried to track you down in every country, every city, every hotel, every whorehouse in the world? I cabled telephoned, I telexed, but you were not to be found. You were not available. You killed my child. I reckon we'll give her a run for her money, eh, John? She'll be begging old Turson to get her off. Help me, Daddy, save me from these terrible sailors. Always come pretty, don't they? Prefer a role to myself. Liars. You shouldn't have come here today, Father. I'd forgotten why I hated you so much. I shall quite simply have you removed. Really? But you never did like bad publicity, did you? This should make quite a spread. I like your ship, by the way. It reminds me of the one in the pocket. 